So let's move on to um, from a fake assault on the freedom of the press against <laughs> yeah, Peter Ducey to a real one in the person of Julian Assange. Um, significant development yesterday. Let's go ahead and throw this tear sheet that we have up on the screen from NBC News. So this was a victory for Assange and for you know advocates of a free press. WikiLeaks Assange can take extradition appeal to UK's top court in December. The High Court in London overturned a lower court's ruling that Assange should not be extradited due to mental health concerns. Um, I want to read a little bit more from the New York Times here because this is, it's a little bit complicated what the ruling actually was, and I don't have deep knowledge of the mm. UK judiciary system either, <laughs> so I just want to read what the New York Times wrote. They said, Lord Chief Justice Ian Burnett of the High Court, in announcing the ruling in a brief court appearance on Monday morning, endorsed a further appeal of the case to the Supreme Court on one narrow issue, which is the timing of when the United States provided assurances that Mr. Assange would be treated humanely in American prisons. The Biden administration had given those assurances to the British government when the case was already before the high court after a low court had considered the case and ruled that American prison conditions were too harsh to extradite Mr. Assange, citing his mental health and the risk that he could be driven to suicide. So a lot of you guys know the backstory here. Of course, you know the prosecution of Assange, which started under Trump, has been continued under Biden. Grave threat to press freedom. The top threat, I would say, in the world mm -hmm. to freedom in the press. Biden rejecting the Obama DOJ's decision that, hey, we can't, we would like to charge this guy, but we can't charge him without also implicating the New York Times and every other publisher and journalist out there. So listen, we're gonna make Assange's life miserable. We're not gonna be nice to the guy, but we don't feel like we can prosecute him. Trump comes in, takes a much more aggressive stance and Biden has continued that prosecution. So now they've been seeking his extradition from the UK. That effort to extradite him hit a bit of a speed bump for the U.S. government when a U.K. court ruled that the conditions here in U.S. American prisons are so terrible that Assange would be at risk of grievous harm and potentially suicide. His mental health has been so compromised by these many years of isolation and being holed up in the embassy and now being in prison that they worry very much that he would survive this and having spoken of course both of us to his brother, his brother he yeah. says out outright they are trying to kill him and they may well succeed so what this decision means is not really on the merits of the case against assange but they're saying hey u.s government you after we ruled against you and said american prison conditions are too harsh you gave us all these assurances, which are basically meaningless, and they've got a million loopholes in there. But anyway, give that you gave us these assurances, but they came too late. They came at the wrong time when the court, when this case was already before the high court. And that is the narrow issue that they are looking at, that they're saying, okay, we will allow you to continue this process to appeal to uh, the UK Supreme Court, Britain's Supreme Court. Stella Morris, Julian's fiance, spoke out yesterday claiming a victory here, but reminding us all that there is no real victory so long as Julian continues to be imprisoned. Let's take a listen to what Stella had to say. What happened in court today is precisely what we wanted to happen. The high court certified that we had raised point of law, point of law of general public importance and that the Supreme Court has good grounds to hear this appeal. The situation now is that the Supreme Court has to decide whether it will hear the appeal. But make no mistake, we won today in court. But let's not forget that every time we win, as long as this case isn't dropped, as long as Julian isn't freed, Julian continues to suffer. For almost three years, he's been in Belmarsh prison, and he is suffering profoundly, day after day, week after week, year after year. Julian has to be freed, and we hope that this will soon end. So important note there, now the Supreme Court, this is what happens mm -hmm. next, gets to decide whether they're going to consider Julian's appeal on this one narrow um, grounds. And listen, the bottom line here is the Biden administration 
the Merrick Garland's DOJ, they could stop this prosecution at any point. They claim to care so much about freedom of the press. And you were talking earlier about the things that yes. Russians and Chinese yeah. throw back at us, like, oh, yeah. you've, you've got such a great democracy there. This is one of those issues that any foreign adversary can look at and say, oh, freedom of the press, tell me about Julian Assange and the way that you have him locked in prison. I forget which prime minister. I think it might have been Turkmenistan. It was one of those Central Asian countries who pushed back against a BBC journalist who asked her about uh, freedom of the press. And he goes, you want to tell me about freedom of the press? He's like, your own country is locking up Julian Assange right now. Azerbaijani. Azerbaijan. Yeah, sorry. That was, I was Azerbaijan. Apologies to the Turkmenistanis out there. <laughs> um, but what, what I found always interesting about those is that you have, look, obviously there's no comparison necessarily between like hundreds of people and one, but when that one exists and it's such a clear one, then it's very clear what you should do. And all of these journalists out there, you know, Jim Acosta apparently has his own show on CNN, Crystal, uh, recently found out about it. And it's amazing to me because the way he conducts himself, it was so clear that all of this freedom of the press stuff during the Trump years, it was a farce. It was too enriching himself. He wrote yeah. a book, right? Theater. Attack on the press, theater, in order to get his own television show yeah. on CNN. Very low-rated television show, I'm sure. I can't wait till the ratings come out. But what's important to understand there is at the very same time as all that was happening, there were real attacks on the press. There were those journalists who were imprisoned in Myanmar, in Burma. That's right. Nobody talked. They, in the White House press corps, it's like they didn't exist because they're narcissists. They don't actually care about the press. They care about freedom of ac their access to power and protecting that at all costs. And when somebody challenges that, and ultimately Julian's crime, his real crime, was exposing Hillary Clinton. I mean, let's be honest. That is what turned the entire international intelligentsia against him. Before that, he was a hero uh, for standing up against well, Iraq. I, I mean, mean Rachel not Maddow totally and those because people. Obama, they, I mean, they didn't prosecute Definitely him. Definitely true. But they did not like this man either. I mean, the, the spying, the things that, you know, he and his family have talked about, the way that they had this just insane surveillance of him. Um, they certainly wanted to prosecute I mean, they made his life hell as well because of him spilling the secrets of the powerful. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And mm -hmm. this is... This is an attempt to send a message to journalists and whistleblowers everywhere that if you are going to expose our dirty laundry and our deep, ugly secrets, we are going to make you pay. And of course, the people whose wrongdoing he actually exposed, there's never any accountability for them. Just like Stephen Donziger, who just spent his 900th day on home confinement, just as it is for him. Um, the whistleblower we talked to yesterday, yeah. Matt Johnson. Targeted by the FBI. Targeted yeah. by the FD FBI for exposing animal abuse um, at a, an Iowa pig farm. It is always the whistleblowers who pay the price, and they make sure that they do it so people will be too afraid to come forward and do the right thing. And sadly, it's highly effective. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And at the end of the day, most people won't say a word about this. And, you know, for those of you who might be skeptical, I've said it here before, it's very simple. The way he would be prosecuted would criminalize journalism, and it would almost certainly be used as a pretext by the DOJ to come after people like us and to come after any anti-establishment person who reveals real crimes of the regime. And so to protect that, our founders gave us the right and we need to protect it at all costs. That's that is yeah. exactly right. And you know, what this on a personal level what they have done to this man is abhorrent. And um, you know, his his fiance, his family, all they want is for him to be able to come home and live a normal life. Yeah. There you go. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.